Our title is While Everyone Was Sleeping. While Everyone Was Sleeping. Sleep constitutes the major daily rest. The need for sleep varies from person to person. And we do not know exactly why this is so. It does not match one's gender. It does not match one's intelligence or the amount of exercise one gets. But the issue is that you have to sleep. And for newborn babies, they need about 20 hours. For those six-year-olds, they need 10 hours. 12-year-olds, they need nine hours. And the adults approximately need eight hours. Whether these averages are optimal, it varies depending upon the individual. Like I know, I sleep between six and eight. But at least I am healthy, I think. <laughs> so while one sleeps, he is more or less unconscious. He or she does not know what is happening around him or her. The person is insensitive. This is why Jesus used sleep to explain the death we die today in John chapter 11, verse 1 to 13. And that's why let, not, let no one confuse you to tell you that once one dies now, the person has gone to hell or gone to heaven. Those are not biblical. The biblical thing is that once one dies now, the person is just sleeping. And at a certain time, when Jesus comes the second time, the person will become conscious again. And then it is at that point that the person will now go to heaven or be, you know, go to hell after 1,000 years. But let's not go into that point. We will get back to that sometime in the future. Now while Eutychus was slept, uh, sleeping in Acts chapter 20 verse 7 to 12 he fell down from an upstairs and died. So this explains the fact that if he was conscious, if he was able to think and remember the height where he was, I'm not sure he would have allowed himself to fall down. Because he was um, oblivious, because he was inactive, because he was sleeping, he just uh, fell down and then he died. The world looks up, looks at us as church that is sleeping. How dare any one of us sleep at a time like this when things are distorted? And the world needs each one of us and the church to help. How can we be sleeping when preachers are distorting the Bible doctrine? When more people claim to be worshipping God 
but doing more evil. When corruption is ravaging our land, when gay marriage, cohabitation, and sexual sins are on rampage, when sin has become the norm and values are discarded, why should any child of God be sleeping? Where is the church? Where is where are the pastors? Where are the elders? Where are the members? Where are the Adventists? And I want to ask you directly, where are you? Where are those who will preach righteousness and separation from sin? Where are the pastors and the preachers who will not use the grace as a pretext to sin. You know, some individuals, they just tell you, don't worry, grace is sufficient. And preaching grace is sufficient, they will not tell you that doing A, B, C, or D uh, may be evil. Everything here is bad. We do not need to be sleeping. The Bible warns in First Peter chapter 5, verse 8 to 9, be self-controlled and alert. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in the faith because you know that your brothers throughout the world are undergoing the same kind of sufferings. It was while everyone was sleeping that the devil sowed wheat in the farm. When people are off guard, when we get disconnected from God and his words, then Satan undermines us by sowing bad seeds. This is why we need to be watchful. Satan works in darkness. As such, he wants his children to be in darkness. The psalmist mentions in Psalms chapter 119 verse 105 that the word of God is a light unto our path. As long as we dwell on the word of God, we cannot be in darkness. As long as we dwell on the word of God, we cannot be found sleeping. We sleep when we call sin righteousness and righteousness sin. When we call evil good and good and go on to practice it, we sleep. We sleep when we cheat we sleep when we hate. We sleep when we steal. When we commit adultery or fornication, we sleep. When we, we sleep when we do things not in line with God's words. Brothers and sisters, we need to wake up from our slumber. We need to realize that Satan is holding us sway. Know this. It is a calculated attempt by Satan to undermine us. Revelation chapter 12, verse 12, it says, Therefore, rejoice you heaven and you who dwell in them. But woe to earth and the sea because the devil has gone down to you. He is filled with fury because he knows that he has a short time. Unfortunately, very, very unfortunately, the devil knows what he is doing. But we do not know 
what we are doing. We give reasons for the positions we are taking. We give reasons for the actions we are taking. Gentlemen and ladies, as long as these actions are not in tandem with the word of God, you may think you know what you are doing. Unfortunately for you, the devil knows what he is doing. But while everyone was sleeping, his enemy came and sowed wheat among the wheat, wheat and went away. At the point when the one you know to be behaving well automatically changes. That brother that has been very zealous, that has been exemplary for whatever reason. He just changed. He no longer does the same thing he used to do. He begins to do things that are contrary to the word of God. It is possible that the seed is successfully sown by the devil. Children of God, these weeds of the enemy are found in the field of God. As such, we should not be surprised that things are obviously going wrong in the church. We should not be alarmed that the pastor or elder is committing adultery or stealing or into corruption and drunkenness. Should we be baffled that the church board is standing on the wrong side of issues and supporting evil? We should not be surprised that Sister A or Sister B will abandon her house and live with a church member or a boyfriend or consistently sleep and have sex with him or that she is a prostitute. Why are you surprised? Should not be. Why should we be astonished that some brothers in the church are doing these things too? They may be pushing drugs or even taking the drugs, drinking, alcohol, and even smoking. Why should we be um, ast astounded that among the ones that are listening to me now, there are those who love the world, the worldly things, more than the ones who are in the world. They love the worldly music. They love the worldly dressing. They want to look like the world. No. The enemy has sown this seed by their fruits. We shall know them. In Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2, the Bible says, Therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Do not conform any longer, I emphasize. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. In explaining the parable, Jesus indicates in Matthew chapter 13, verse 37 to 39, the one who sowed the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, and the good seed stands for the son, sons of the kingdom. The wits are the sons of the evil one, and the enemy who sows them is the devil. 
the harvest is the end of the age. And the harvesters are the angels. Take note. God will always allow the seed and the weed to grow together in the field. The good and the bad will always be found in the church. The question is, are you a seed or are you a weed? Even if you may assume you are a seed, be mindful because there is a way that seems right unto a man but the end thereof is the way of death. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 12. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. He is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. Is it possible that God has kept you alive till today? so that you're able to hear and make a decision to give your life to him. Is it possible that you have come to this congregation today as an opportunity you have to give your life to Jesus Christ, knowing that the devil has a plan to undermine you as much as he has a plan to undermine me? But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, the heavens will disappear with a roar. The elements will be destroyed by fire. And the earth and everything in it will be laid bare. It will be a very horrible time. What will be your situation? Are you still sleeping? Will you continue to sleep after now? Is it not possible that you will ask Jesus Christ to take care of you and you give your life to him? Loving him, keeping his commandment, and being obedient to him. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13, Now all has been heard. Here is the conclusion of the matter. Fear God and keep his commands. For this is the whole duty of man. For God will bring every deed into judgment, including the ones that are done in secret, even if they are good or even if they are bad. I get frightened when I read these texts. It does not really matter what you think. It does not really matter what the society wants you to think. Whether you are politically correct or not, it does not matter. God has his right and he knows the wrong. And on the judgment day, he will judge you based on his right and his wrong. We have a responsibility to give our life to Jesus Christ. Revelation chapter 3, verse 19 to 22. Those whom I love, I rebuke and discipline. So be earnest and repent. Here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with him and he with me on my throne. Just as I overcame and sat down with my father on his throne, he who has ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church. I think all of us have ears and we are listening. Revelation chapter 22, verse 12 and 17. Behold, I'm coming soon. My reward is with me, and I will give to everyone according to what, his, what he has done. The spirit and the bride say, come. And let him who hears say, come. 
Whoever is thirsty, let him come. And whoever wishes, let him take the free gift of the water of life. The best time to repent, the best time to give our lives to Jesus Christ is the earliest time. And that earliest time is now. It is certain that the devil will take advantage of any opportunity we give him by sleeping to sow his dangerous weeds. Can you think about your life in the light of the word of God? What opportunities of sleeping are you giving to the devil? Not being able to forgive someone? Trying to do things because others are doing it? And because of one reason or the other? We should be prayerful, asking God, take our lives and let it be consecrated to him. We can do all things through Christ who gives us strength. It is God alone that can help us. Let us stand to pray for God's help and make commitment as we sing SDAH 330. And as we sing, let's take note of the words. Consecrated Lord to thee. Take my hands and let them move at the impulse of your love. Take my love, 
My Lord, I pour at the feet a treasure's store. Take myself and I will be ever only for thee. If this is our prayer and we are committing ourselves to God and if we do this always it will be difficult for us to fall asleep and it will be difficult for the devil to sow weeds in our lives. I pray that our heavenly father will grant our prayers in Jesus name. Father Almighty, we ask that your grace may abide with us. Help your children as we have committed ourselves to you, that we will be better children of yours and do the things that are right in your life, in our, in before you. And that Satan may not have any opportunity to sow any seed, a bad seed in our lives. Have mercy on us. Forgive us in any way we have offended you. And make it possible that when Jesus comes, we will be accepted in your kingdom. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Amen.